All right, and we are live. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Barbell Life Show. As always, I'm your host, Tony Camper, and uh, today we have a special guest. Um, but before that, let me uh, introduce to you my partner in crime, my good friend, the man behind the scenes, the guru, Mr. Larry Carter. Hey, everybody. I sound uh, so happy, Larry. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, this week's guest is a, uh, he's got quite a story to share. Um, real quick, uh, give a background on him. Um, I met him through Facebook, um, about his story. Uh, basically, he was a personal trainer, bodybuilder, um, everything was going good, and then he was diagnosed with cancer. And um, from that point on, he had to, uh, you know, struggle with that disease and uh, basically go through, you know, radiation and all that and um, uh, fight it and, and overcome the odds, uh, which he did. And um, from there on, he, you know, he, he fought back. He put on size. He, he got back in the gym and uh, made his way back to the stage. So... Um, let me introduce our this week's guest, Mr. William Mariansky. I said that right. Yes, you said it right. Thanks. I go by Taz, man. Everybody knows me by Taz. Taz, man. Okay. How'd you get Taz that nickname? Taz, man. Yep. So you're right. I 18 months ago, I was diagnosed with throat cancer, HPV virus, caused it. Um, Everybody does get the HPV virus. There's only 10% of us that can't pass it, and 1% get the cancer. But it is starting to grow pretty fast, quickly. People are starting to get cancer from it more often than not. So everybody who's out there, if you have children, please get them vaccinated. So... The vaccination will stop that cancer from from hitting them. Okay. And uh, was this where was the cancer at? Was it your throat or? How? It was it was in my throat. I did three months of intense radiation. I had three 12-hour sessions of chemo. Uh, I was told that I was going to have to take a month off work, and I took three days. Wow, Man, that's that's so, definitely that uh, that fighter mentality right there. Yeah, and I went from 230 pounds to 150 pounds in three months. Wow! So yeah, yeah it was it was, it was wow. pretty drastic. Now, is that from losing your appetite, or just the the radiation and stuff you're doing, or just a combination of everything? It, it was the radiation. Uh, usually you uh, take a feeding tube, and I wouldn't take it. So I, what I did was I just started drinking protein shakes just to make sure I got my protein in. Um, ate what I could, chicken noodle soup, because my throat was so burnt from the radiation, I could only do so much. Oh, wow. But, you know, I, I didn't want a hole in my stomach, so I didn't take the feeding tube, which nobody's ever done that either, they say. <laughs> well, you're a stubborn, stubborn dude, huh? That's good. Oh, yeah. Pretty stubborn. Um, it's my way or no way. So that, that, that's kind of, you know, why we uh, named the show. I don't know if you know the, the name of the show here, but we, we kind of named the show. Because, you know, hearing your story, you know, train to always be there and you will be there when it counts. So how you train is how, when it counts, you'll default to that level of training. And that seems to be the mantra of how things go in your life. Oh, yeah. 
Yep, and oh, like I said, they they also told me that I wouldn't be able to train my clients for a month, and my clients count on me to be there. So regardless if I was on morphine, you guys, I was still there. <laughs> Um, yeah, Larry brings up a good point though. Like, <clears throat> if you, when you're when you're in this lifestyle, and you know you know what it takes to to push yourself mentally to that point where you're pushing yourself past your pain thresholds, you're you're committing to something, you're, um, you're dragging yourself in the gym when you don't want to. Like, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, discipline, and uh, I think. That carries over in your personal life. So, you know, when you have a diagnosis of cancer, do that. And you had that mental toughness where you do. Yeah, there, 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 was, there was a couple times that I about gave up. You know, oh, I, was yeah. getting, I was getting tired of eating macaroni and cheese, you know, and. It was uh, it was to a point where I didn't think I was going to gain any more weight, and then I I just kept fighting and I didn't give up. Uh, that's why I believe. I mean, I don't care if doctors say that you're going to die or whatever. You know, you can always fight. Yeah, you uh, what I was. And you're right. I mean, if you have that mental mindset that you could uh, beat this thing, you know, from from your training and you know how you apply uh, your day to day life, and you apply that to this this battle you're in. Sorry, guys. My uh, I lost you guys for a second. No, you're oh, good. We I'm lost at... you in video, but it's all good. Yeah. Am I here now? Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So uh, during this, when, when you started losing the weight and stuff, um, how hard was that as far as um, mentally? Because I know, you know, with the bodybuilding lifestyle, you know, it, it's losing a little bit of mass is a, is a hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like I said, when you're 230 pounds, and in three months, you go to 150, that's, that's 80 pounds. And, you know, I when I started back working out again, because I couldn't work out until, okay, I was diagnosed with the cancer in October of, 20, uh, of 2014. December 23rd was my last radiation treatment. All right. April 21st is the first day that I was allowed to go back and start actually working out. And 10 pounds was heavy. 10 pounds was real heavy. And I didn't think I was going to get back because I would, it hurt. But you have, to push, you have to push through that. You basically had to start from scratch, huh? Yes, I did. Now, Thank God there's muscle memory. <laughs> walk me through that process. Like, uh, you know, your first day back in the gym, you said it was hard and, and whatnot. Um, what kept you kept you going, though? What kept you pushing and, and getting to that point to where you are uh, now? Because I didn't want to look the way I looked. I, I wanted to get myself back on stage again. And the only way I was going to do that is if I pushed myself to the absolute limit. And now I believe I look better than I did before I had the cancer. Wow. Now, how long did this, uh, this whole process take uh, for you to start to get your weight back and kind of get back into your groove? It's been since April 22nd, so 16 months. Okay. And how long was it till you got back on stage? I will be on stage October of this year. Will be my first show back. Okay. Nice. So I'm doing I'm doing the Phoenix Europa, which Larry should know about. 
and I'm going to be doing the November, the Western Regionals in Mesa. So, Larry, if you want to go to the show, just hit me up. I'll, I'll get you in. All right, cool. That sounds like a bet. This is, uh, this is in November, you said? Yes. <laughs> Tony might what, be back. Hey, do you know? Excuse me? What's the date? I believe it's November November 13th, somewhere like 13th or 18th, something like that. I'll get you that. I'll get you that date. Yeah, because I'll be back in Arizona uh, the beginning of November, so maybe I'll be able to catch it too. Yeah, Maybe let me know. Okay. So um, I'm getting, when do you start uh, your prep? Right now I have about 7% body fat, so I won't have to start my prep for like nine weeks out. I could have done this. There was a show yesterday I could have done. That, I just, uh, that's out in Tucson or Phoenix? No, that was in Phoenix. It was the Dennis James Classic. Oh, okay. Yeah, he just had uh, his first one, I want to say, last year, right? Yeah. No, his first one was two years ago. That's when I found out I had cancer. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that was his first show. I was in his first show, and I had a, a big lump on the side of my neck, and I didn't know what it was. That's when I found out it was cancer. Oh, wow. Damn. Okay. So um, now, now that you're back on track, you said you're, you're, you're where you want to be, uh, you're about to get back on stage, um, what, uh, what, what is something you could share with, with the, the audience as far as uh, you know, sticking to it and not giving up? Like, what are some things that helped you uh, during your struggle, your fight? Well, my my kids, my family, uh, knowing that if I gave up, my body would have gave up. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's one thing I didn't want to do was lose my life. So I believe if you don't give up, you know, if you keep pushing yourself, that good things will come. Now, now, do you think, you know, being in this lifestyle beforehand and having that strong uh, mental toughness kind of helped you along the way? Yeah, it does. It does. But, I mean, anybody who has who's strong will, you know, can push through it. You know, we're, my motto is always, we're always in it to win it. So, you got to be in it to win it. Now, is this something you uh, you teach your, your, your clients? Oh, yeah. It's on my shirts. Well, my old shirts that I had. <laughs> okay. The new, um, my, new, my new shirts now have my Tasmanian Devil logo with my, my ribbon on it, my cancer ribbon. Okay. Well, on that note, um, what's your – go ahead and throw out a plug real quick. Give me your, uh, your website to anybody who's interested in that. Oh yeah, my uh, my website is www.tasmantraining.com. Um, anybody watching the video, that's going to be at the bottom of the video. It should already be there, so you can click the link and and have access to that. Uh, uh, there's pictures of me before, before my cancer, during my cancer, and steps of where I came up to now. There's also my clients, their before and afters. You know, I do online online training. If you want online training, um, I'm very very reasonable. I am not out there to rake everybody. I'm out there just to make everybody better. Now, Tasman Training. How did you get this nickname, Tasman? I'm curious. I, I'm a little. I'm a little wild. <laughs> I'm a little hyper, a little hyper. So they start calling you Taz, man, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I'm I 40. See. Look, I'm 47 years old. Okay, what what 47 year old do you know has a mohawk? <laughs> yeah, 
I can see that. Um, <laughs> uh, let me rewind real quick. Uh, I should have asked this when we first started, but um, how'd you get into this lifestyle? How'd you get into, you know, working out, um, training, all that? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the whole story. I was telling Larry. I started at Scottsdale Culinary Institute as a, as a certified chef. So I, I knew my nutrition. Um, I was in the restaurant business for about seven years. Quit, quit the restaurant business because I wanted to make more money, so I got into doing uh, glass. So I did the Phoenix Football Stadium. I did the Tempe Center of the Arts um, building. I did a lot of big glass buildings. And I just, 20, after 20 years of doing that, I got tired of that. So I got into, uh, a friend of mine started training me, and he's the one that told me that I should be a personal trainer. So I took his advice, and here I am today. How long have you been training for? Uh, nine years. Okay. So you started a little late in the game, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Shoot, if you're you're competing in the uh, Dennis James. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, like I said, that was the show was two years ago that I did his very first show out here, and uh, that's when I found out I had cancer. Then I did even with the cancer. I two weeks later I went to California, did the West Coast Classic. And after that one is when I started getting my treatments done. <laughs> so I did my two shows. I did my two shows when I had cancer, so I can get those out. Yeah, that's funny. You're like, let me let me knock these shows out, and then I'll start the, the treatment. Yeah, they've been they've been training all this. Now, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, so you're out in Phoenix. You uh, yeah. Train out at Metroflex, right? Yes, it's on uh, 19th Avenue and Rose Garden. Now, how's that? I uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, Josh, right? He he owns that that gym. Josh Josh Barnett owns the gym. Um, we're a franchise. You know, every everybody owns who uh, Metroflex is not owned by one person. It's owned by several different people. Um. It's a hardcore gym, but we all help each other out. You know, we're like family there. So people who join that gym, they shouldn't be afraid or they shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't feel intimidated because we're all there for one thing, and that's to get you healthy and make sure that you're in the best shape of your life. Now, how, uh, how would you compare Metroflex to other gyms you've trained at? I've heard good things. Um, it just depends. I mean, like I said, we're more of a hardcore gym. It depends on if you like. See, at our gym, we're allowed to scream, yell, grunt. We all do that. It's not perfect. Over, <laughs> over at other gyms, you can't do that. You know? I mean, there's... Planet Fitness has a lump sense, lunk, lunk alarm or whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, I've, I've said it all before. <laughs> yeah. And they feed you pizza. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, me and Larry uh, actually plan on uh, checking that gym out. Um, cool. I've, I've, yeah, I've talked to Josh about it and, uh, you know, maybe film some some videos and stuff like that. He seems like a cool dude. Um, so definitely. Yeah, you guys. Out. You guys, when you guys come out there, you guys should let me put you through a leg workout, see if you can make it. <laughs> I'm already dreading it, man. Whenever <laughs> I say, let, let me put you through my leg workout, I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Well, you see my legs. <laughs> you see my legs in the pictures. <laughs> yeah, when people, when people say leg workout, I think that on the leg workout for someone else, they add a little something. Like, dang, I, I really, you know, they may not do it. They're like, but dang, I want to see what happens here. So they're yeah. like, ah, oh, ah, oh, crap. 
I would I would not put you guys through a workout I wouldn't do myself. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll go through your leg workout. I'll go through it. All right. Yeah. You can do it right with me. I'll do it right with you. All right. I'll, I'll do it with you. Right, so. <laughs> it's, a, it's a date then. We'll get together and uh, hit a, a Tasman leg workout. Out of cool. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, you got anything, Larry? Yes. Oh, man, mine is a little off right now. Dealing with this damn computer. So uh, tell us a little bit about your clients. Like, what type of clients do you generally see? Uh, it doesn't, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter to me. Um, as far as my clients, I have all kinds. I have people who want to do shows. I have people who want to gain weight. I have people that want to lose weight. Um, general, generally, I have clients that want to do shows. As far as most of the men are bodybuilders. So... Oh, yeah. You're coaching them through uh, contest prep and all that. Yeah, I had I had a client yesterday in the Dennis James show. He was a classic bodybuilder. His name's Greg Tin Man Tinell, and he took first place. Oh, nice. And what's your so, What's your approach to to, to coaching? Like, uh, do you do anything uh, particular to you as far as? Uh, Do's and don'ts. Um, honestly, the best advice I can give you is listen to your coach. Yeah, you if you listen to your coach, and you don't come in the best shape of your life, well, then that's your coach's fault. But if you don't listen to your coach and you do whatever you want, then that's your fault. Now, do you do uh, you do both uh, in-house and online uh, coaching? I do. I do online. Um, I do more in-house. I have a few clients that live in Vegas that I that I train. They used to live out here, but I do online for them now. Um, I'm trying to get into doing more online coaching. Um, I like hands-on a lot better, but it is what it is. I mean, I'll, I'll go to California once. If if I have a client or a few clients in California, I'll pick a day out of the month and I'll go out there and I'll train them that one day and I'll come back. So you're actually, that's that's dedication right there. You're going all the way to California to train somebody. <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, do you do posing, posing coaching? Um... I do as I do men's uh, bodybuilding posing. I don't do uh, any figure or bikini. I'm not an expert at that. Mm-hmm. I have I have people that do that for me, or I'll I'll send my people to uh, coaches that can do that. I'm more of a bodybuilder, bodybuilding coach. That's your. So. That's your. Craft, I got you. That's my craft, yeah. What do you think about this new uh, classic physique uh, category in the IFBB NPC? I love it because that's what I'm going to be. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> You're going to bring home the win. Yeah, uh, I've, I've sent I've sent my pictures to several of the Phoenix judges out here, and they said that. I would do very well in the classic bodybuilding, and that's where I should go because my legs are portioned now to the way my upper body is. Before, my legs used to be bigger in my upper body. Yeah, that's usually the other way around. Most guys got big upper bodies and smaller legs. Yeah, yep. That's so, a lot to your, uh, your leg days, I'm guessing. <laughs> that's why I was worried about the leg. Days. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> I'm already grinning. I already know it's going to suck. <laughs> um, it's, it's generally the day after that sucks. Yeah, no, two days. Two days. 
What's you won't that? be able to ride your bike, Larry, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> get, get my cardio games out. <laughs> with uh, Norman Yates, and he was training. Uh, hey, what was his name? Chris Cormier, and uh, so Chris Cormier went to Yates's gym out in England. And uh, long story short, by the end of it, Chris ran outside and was just puking. That's how intense that leg workout is, and. Uh, I remember when I first watched that video, I was like, all right, I need to step my game up. Because if I'm not feeling like I'm going to throw up, then, yeah, I'm not hitting it hard enough. Yeah, we, um, like with my workouts, I do a lot of, I, Dennis James actually has trained a few people in our gym. And he does a lot of um, mutt work, muscle under tension. And uh, I, I, I watch him, and I have that somewhat incorporated into my workouts also. So my workouts are, are pretty intense. But, uh, can you describe mutt for us? Huh? Can you describe mutt for us? Muscle yeah, under mu muscle under tension. Yeah, it, um, say, for instance... He'll do one slow movement and then three regular, or one slow movement, five regular. So it'd be like one, three, one, one, five, one. So it'd be one, like if you're doing a, a, a leg press, you'd be coming down real slow for one set, coming up real slow for one set, and then five regular sets, or five regular reps. Okay. So you just, it's muscle under tension. You just keep that muscle under tension. That's why you're going so slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I saw a video he posted. Uh, it was uh, Dennis James coaching um, Dexter Jackson, and he had him on you know, a night press, and he was doing that same exact thing. He had him go real slow. And you yeah. know Dexter, not Dexter, I'm sorry, uh, Flex, Flex Wheeler. And, uh, you know, Flex, is a, he was a big dude back in his day. He's still pretty big. But anyway, uh, he had uh, Flex wanting to quit, man. Oh yeah, he's like, that's it, no, and he's like, come on, keep going, and he had him go real slow down, and then coming back up. I'm like, man. Oh yeah, I, I, I seen Dennis destroy Marcus Haley. Uh, there's a, there's a few pros that he destroyed. <laughs> it was pretty fun watching it too. I mean, shit. I think, uh, I think when these guys train each other, they, they kind of go all out you know it's like uh if they t they take it as a challenge like you're gonna you're gonna hate this this workout oh yeah if something blasts through your workout then you, you feel like you uh you didn't do enough <laughs> um i mean shit look at rammy's legs that dude's huh? not freaking i said look at look at big rammy's legs yeah dennis used to train them yeah that's used to train at our gym <laughs> He's got two children on his freaking on his legs. Um, yeah, his legs are his yeah. legs are thirty two inches around, thirty freaking two inches. Yeah, they're insane, and y'all won't be surprised if he's he's the next Olympia. I mean, that dude's just a beast. If he can get his conditioning on point, no one can yep. fuck with him. Yeah, um, he started. He started. Uh, he only started like six years ago. He started working out six years ago. Yeah, he's a doctor. Good wow. God. No, crazy. Wow. <laughs> Man, I need, to, I need to step my game up. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we're talking about leg workouts. Um, walk us through one of yours. I – like which one? I, I use bands. I use uh, – I'll, I'll put bands on a Smith machine. And have you do 30 reps or 30 reps, 30, 30 squats at once. Oh, okay. Um, huh? Non-stop? Non-stop. <laughs> after that, after that, we'll do lunges. We'll do, we'll, we'll, we're usually going to do a triple set. I usually do triple sets, so... It'd be 
like your squat, then 20 sissy squats, and then a lunge. Or we're going to do the leg press, 30 reps, do the hack squat, 30 reps, and then lunge. Yeah, I'm, I'm dreading this workout, man. I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the uh, Smith machine. Um, you know, a lot of guys who, who don't know, they try to they try to rag on people that squat in the uh, Smith machine, but it, there's they're squatting for for power and um, you know powerlifting reasons, and then they're squatting for the bodybuilding side of it, and um, you know I, I knew a guy uh, shoot I can't think of his name right now, anyway big bodybuilder dude he uh, he was telling me you know if you want to build size in your legs. Get on, get on that Smith machine and do. Uh, what was he saying? He was saying, squat till, uh, till parallel, not breaking parallel like a, a typical squat, but just stop right at parallel, and then come back up. And uh, I did that one time, man, and I swear my quads were on fire. And I try to tell people, I'm like, you know, the Smith machine has its place in bodybuilding, as uh, for squats. And oh yeah. Don't you don't squat in the Smith the Smith machine. I'm like, all right, dude. Tell that to some of these these pros that have got massive legs. You know, it's there. Yeah, there's, the there's some pros that won't do a regular squat anymore because it's it's injured them. Mm-hmm. They'll use the Smith machine because it's it's safer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So way, I mean, take advantage of everything that's out there. Exactly. To where your ego won't let you, you know, get on a, a Smith machine and, you know, isolate your quads, you're missing out. Oh yeah, it's just like, it's just like people don't know about a vertical press either. We have one at our gym, and it's one of the best machines there is. Yeah, you're gonna have to show us that one. Does, oh, no, you're gonna use that one. <laughs> Is, is uh, the Metroflex Phoenix kind of like the uh, the Long Beach one where they have a lot of old school equipment? No, actually our equipment's uh, fairly new. It's um, uh, actually we have uh, the best leg machines that you can use, the uh, Nebula machines. So we're basically... We are known for legs at our gym. Nice. Uh, well, then, yeah, for sure. That's what we're going to trade when we go. I yep, hope you're well, ready, Larry, because uh, this I'm shit's ready. about to be brutal. I'm ready. <laughs> you know what? I think your ball's out. You just do it. You do it. Yeah, then, then afterwards. You got any wheelchairs over there? No, but we do have buckets. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. I'll just, I'll just. Pull that out. We have buckets. So, um, what's uh, what's in store for you, man? You said you got the uh, the show in October, possibly November. Um, what else is on the list? Yeah, as right now, um, I have those two shows that I'm definitely doing. Uh, I am 47 years old, but. I don't look it. I don't feel it. So I I do want to do a few more shows next year. Um, I want to keep going as, as long as I can, as long as my body's going to let me. I mean, I've had surgery on both of my shoulders. Uh, they told me that both of them have to be replaced, but I'm not going to get them replaced until after I'm done, after I'm done having my fun. Uh, now these are uh, training injuries you got. Uh, one's from a training injury. One's from um, when I was in construction. Okay. Now tell me something, because I got a I got a shoulder injury too. How do you uh, how do you train past that? Like what's uh, what do you do to kind of you know uh, circumvent that that injury? Um. You want to know what I do? <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. Okay. I work through it. I work through the pain. It hurts because I, I, 
my shoulder, I can't get my shoulder all the way back. So I try to work. What I do, actually, I'm, I've, I've been going to, um, it's called ga gastrin treatment. It's where they break down your muscle with a blade. They take a blade and they break down your muscle tissue. And it leaves bruises, but it, what it does is it, it stretches your muscle out and brings fresh blood to that area. So it's, it's, I'm guessing it's a really small little blade that they're using? or I'm trying Yeah, to it, well, it's about like this. They hold it and they roll, roll it on you. It hurts. Uh, uh, you said blade, and I'm picturing cutting, like they're cutting no, inside the muscle. No, no, no. It's 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 a it's a dull blade. Oh, so they just rub it and kind of. I got you. Yeah, they break down the muscle, the 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 fascia of your muscle. Mm -hmm. They break down that fascia, break it all down, bring the blood out, and it what it does that blood it 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 heals it. It makes it grow. It makes it makes it stronger, better. I got you. It works. It works. What is it called? I didn't hear you. The Graston treatment. Graston. Or else, or else they have a, a, another one that I get done. It's with suction cups. They stick suction cups on you, and they bring that blood out, and they, they stretch you. I've heard of that one. Yeah, I, I do that one, too. <laughs> Us old people... Us old people have to try to stay up with you youngins. <laughs> uh, me and Larry, are, we're right behind you, man. 35. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 12 years. <laughs> uh, um, what's that suction treatment called? I'm, I'm curious about that one. That, I, I don't even know what it's called. I just, I go to the girl and she sticks the suction cups on me and tells me to move and I do it and what it does is in that just that one area where they have them suction cups it brings all that blood into that area and it leaves some pretty gnarly bruises it, it's just called, from what I understand it's just called cupping therapy or Chinese cupping, yeah. therapy. probably cupping therapy now you uh, you're actually seeing these things help you though am I what these things are actually helping you out though you seen a difference? Yeah, I, I've got about 10% more movement in my shoulders than I had before. Oh, wow. Yeah, the cupping therapy itself goes along with a lot of uh, Chinese medicine, um, like acupuncture and so forth. So they use it as a regular treatment in their you know, medical practices over there. Um, it's strange for us here. And, you know, it looks a little bit taboo because, you know, American doctors generally don't do stuff like that. But uh, I would say, like, with the acupuncture, the, the science behind it is pretty legit. Yeah, now, you know, now they're starting to get more into doing the Graston and the cups, the cup treatments. It's, it's starting to be more well-known just like the the Cairo treatment where they stick you in this big casing that's like negative 200 degrees for 30 seconds. Yeah, I saw, I actually saw that, uh, I, I, I watch a lot of boxing and uh, there was these two fighters, they were showing kind of like the, the hype up for the fight and they were showing them in training and stuff and they were both doing that cryo treatment where they stand in there and you can just see all the, the cold air rising and yeah, they're freaking their ass off, but they said it, it makes them feel rejuvenated and helps them it does. heal faster and all that. <laughs> I've never done it, but everybody I've talked to, because we have we have that machine at our at our gym. Oh, really? Everybody, I, yeah, everybody I, that's done it says it. It's like a a whole. It's like a whole different high. Like they feel energized, just like you said. Yeah, I don't know the science behind it, but from what they were saying, it, it just helps them uh, recover fast, and they feel, uh, you know, rejuvenated after they're in that thing. I mean, the yep. way I see it, like I was saying earlier, take advantage of everything that's out there for you, you know? 
Um, you got you these, have to. Yeah, you got these elite athletes that are using stuff like that. They're using it for a reason, you know. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. You, that gym has that, though. I've, I've never heard of a gym having such a high-tech things like that. Yeah, we uh, actually a guy. The guy that owns it is renting the space in our gym, which you know it's great because, like I said, majority of the people that come to our gym are bodybuilders. Like we had in this show, we had. Ten people in this show. All of them, all of them took trophies. So they don't fuck around at Metroflex, uh, Phoenix, huh? No, no. Nope. <laughs> well, like I said, man, me and Larry are gonna make our way out there. Um, I'm actually moving back to Phoenix uh, sometime next year, so we definitely got to get together and uh, get some sessions in, man. Hell yeah. Awesome. I'm down. No. I'm definitely down. I did have one question though about your culinary uh, experience there. Um, what what type? Because you said that helped you out a lot. Um, what types of things have you learned from that that you give as advice? That's a good question. Uh. Not all proteins are, are good for everybody. So break break that down for us. Um, what do you mean by not all proteins are good, and and how would you know a good protein well, is a bad protein? Some people's bodies can't process certain proteins. So, you know, even though, for instance, steak. Um, right now, I I I have a hard time eating steak. But, you know, bison's good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I love bison. Do you? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, afraid to, I'm afraid to eat it. <laughs> so, so, do you find, so do you find that you have a better uh, digestion with uh, plant-based proteins? Or is it is it uh, animal protein, just different types of animals that you notice the difference in the protein? And the best the your your best protein that you're you're gonna get is from fish. Mm. So from cod, cod, chicken. If you eat chicken, steaks. I mean, steak has the protein, but you gotta stay away from it because there's so much fat. I, I try on my diets. I, I stay away from uh, from the fat. I try to keep my diets within a very low fat range. But you you get a lot of the omega fat still by eating the cod, right? Yeah, yeah. Or taking omega vitamins, omega threes. Mm -hmm. So I mean, cod. Eight ounces of cods only one one and a half grams of fat. So when you when you cook your cod, I'm sure being you know close to being a chef there, you you have some good recipes. How do you like to cook your cod? I like mine with Cajun spice on it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Um, it's the only way the only way I'll eat it. I, I go there's a restaurant depot out here that sells Cajun spice. The only way I can eat fish is if I throw that on there. That's the only way. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of cod, but I'll I'll eat it if it's if it's cooked right. Um, you're talking about the bison. Um, bison's actually really uh, it's a lot leaner than um, the beef. Yes, uh, it's actually actually bison has the same the same kind of credentials as chicken. But has some beef, the beef, uh, the beef vitamins. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's delicious, bro. It's really it, the best burger I've ever eaten was bison burger. Oh, really? It's, See, okay. I was gonna try. I was gonna try one, but they tell me it tastes wild. So, and I've had elk, and I've had elk, and it's disgusting. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. It's totally different. Totally different. It, it doesn't have a gamey taste. Like, I don't know who told you that, but uh, it tastes like, you know, it's similar to red meat, like uh, beef. But there's something different about it. It's, it's delicious. I'll definitely try it. I'm a big fan. I'm going to have to. Um, all right. Well, um, I'm going to get wrap it up soon. Uh, do you have anything to share uh, with any, with the viewers out there today? Anything you want to get out there? Yeah, like I said, the HPV virus it is took 15,000 lives last year and it's supposed to quadruple in five years if, if people don't get their children out there and get them vaccinated. Only 30% of America have had their children vaccinated for the HPV virus. We need to get not only the girls, but the boys have to be vaccinated too because the, the girls are the carriers. Now, this is an adult show, so I can bring this up. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the HPV that the guys are getting is from oral sex, right? Yep. <laughs> so, fellas, if you're uh, going downstairs, you might want to consider that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir, about that. <laughs> All right. So, um, definitely look into that. Um, check out Tasman. What is it? www.tasmantraining.com. Yep. And you're doing online coaching, uh, meal plans, right? Diets? Meal plans, diets. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I will answer them. Um, I, have, I have Tasman shirts on sale. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get one of those too. Uh, Excuse me. And um, you train at Metroflex Phoenix. What's the address again? It's Metroflex Phoenix, 1950 West Rose Garden Lane, Phoenix, 85027. Okay. Uh, shout out to Josh Barnett. He's uh, he's part of the Barbell Life. Uh, he's in the group as well. So good dude. Yep. Um, and um, I've worked for him. I've worked for him since we've opened. How long has that been? It's been six years. Well, okay, wow. Well, like I said, man, we'll definitely make our way out there. Um, on that note, Larry, I, he pulled up, uh, pulled up our uh, – go ahead, Larry. I'll let you take it. <laughs> All right. So um, as you guys know, um, the show is brought to you by Barbell Nutrition and the Barbell Life. Um, we have our fat burner coming, and we should be dropping pretty soon. I know we've been saying that. But bear with us. It takes a little while for our new products in the lab. So we'll be getting that. And this will be, uh, Thermite will be our fat loss, uh, our fat burner. So, you know, you guys looking for that. And we'll sell this in a stack with our pre-workout, which is plutonium, and our post-workout supplement, which is uh, chain reaction. So we'll be having various stacks of this. If you're not on the mailing list, um, go, you know, go to barbellnutrition.com and click sign up for the newsletter and get on that mailing list so you can get discounts and everything else. Um, we'll give discounts on apparel also for uh, the Barbell Life clothing and so forth. So uh, definitely make sure if you haven't, go ahead and get that and stay tuned to see what stuff we bring you and we'll have another surprise uh, shortly too with a, with an addition to our supplements. And on that note, um, to our email subscribers, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be sending out an email this week. We're gonna let you know about our newest uh, surprise, like Larry said. Um, we actually have two things coming this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, anybody who goes to the www.barbellnutrition.com. If you're having issues getting on the email list, um, try to get on through your computer. Um, we're having some kind of uh, issue with the uh, with the phones for some people, so um, try it on your computer and um, 
other than that, uh, I think, did you get those, uh, what I sent you earlier, Larry? Yes, I, I did show those during the show. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. New shirts coming, so uh, we'll be dropping those likely today. And uh, all right, well, hey, Will, I really appreciate yeah. you coming out, being a guest on the show. Um, oh, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, your, your story is really phenomenal, man. And uh, it's really good to get your message out there. Um, it, it truly is inspirational, man. I mean, a lot of people, you know, complain about little things. And uh, when there's people out there that really have to fight for their life. Yeah, if, if, my, if my message can just go out to one person, I've done my job. Yeah. I feel you, man. I feel you. Well, hopefully uh, this outlet, you know, kind of spreads that message some more. And um, I look forward to and I don't look forward to uh, meeting up and getting that leg day. Hey, it's going to be it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely fun. I'm looking forward. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's having fun already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, again, thanks for being on the show. Uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Take it easy. Thank you. Oh, bye. Uh, so here we go. Thank <laughs> you.